Friends. Friends. So Tamar Braxton is trending again. Her and Jesse Woods going back and forth because Jesse Woods posted some text messages between her and Tamar Braxton. I'm not familiar who Jesse Wu is, so forgive me if I'm not abreast on what it is that she does. But I do see her face from time to time on Dish Network, so I'm not just completely in the dark on who she is or what she does. I just don't know where she come from. I said this to my TikTok people yesterday, and they told me to go check her out on Love & Hip Hop. Unless... We know that Tamar was in the headlines, um, I don't know, a few months ago in reference to Tommy Lee and her going back and forth about JR. JR is Tamar new, but old, but new fiance that she's been dating for some time. And I guess they decided to make things official again during the holidays. Prior to them making things official, we know that her and Tommy Lee, like I said, had a back and forth where Tamar had called Tommy Lee a crackhead. Okay. First of all, if you really want to be my friend, hit the like button. It's free of charge. If you're from the South, you know how important it is for you to walk into somebody's house and speak. So that's equivalent to you coming into my house and speaking is you hitting that like button. Thank you. If you really want to be my friend, hit the subscribe button. Nevertheless, we're talking about Tamar Braxton and Jesse Wu. I have a video on my TikTok titled, Tamar Braxton is canceled in my book. Let me explain why I made that video and why I titled it that way um and people came in my comments baby they was mad some commenter came through and said some woman on tiktok called me a female first of all i don't like that that's like you're talking about a herd of animals or something in my opinion that's the first thing to come to my mind i'm not an animal okay I'm not female it's woman he said some woman is not going to tell me on social media to cancel tamar braxton because of her opinion you know that's social media people hear what they want to hear and then they also read what they want to read. Baby, nobody is telling you to cancel anybody. I told you she's canceled in my book, but we're going to get into that. Starting with Coming back to Tamar Braxton. Is it Tamar Esteen or Ernestine Braxton? Y'all let me know below. Both of these ladies work for Dish Nation where they give their commentary on trending news. So when Jesse Wu decided to talk about the threatening messages that she received from Tamar Braxton in reference to JR, I was taken aback. I don't know about y'all, but I was like, what? But in my opinion, it is on brand for Tamar Braxton to go off on somebody about her man. Let's review what Jesse Woo Woo had to say about Tamar Braxton, y'all. And I'll be back with the rest of my commentary. Your motherfucking friend is about to get her fucked up. Yeah, he's not nigga right now, but he's still my You know we're not together. He's still my nigga. Okay, she knows he's my I'm from Baltimore. I'm from Baltimore. And I'm just like, I'm just sitting there like, what? What is, what is happening? So make a long story short, she finally calms down her inner Baltimore and tells me what happened. Oh, y'all was at some dinner the other night. Y'all was at some dinner the other night and your friend tried to get with my I'm like, yeah, Rosa tried to get with my nigga. not together, but that's still my Everybody in Atlanta know that's my nigga and I will fuck about him. And I'm like, I'm confused because number one, Colonel Sanders had just went online and told the entire world that he wasn't caught on. And two, I was confused because she was saying we're all at an event and my friend Rosa tried to holler at him. And I'm like, girl, Rosa has actually been in a serious relationship with a very high profile actor for over three years. But she's stuck on it. And she's like, I need her information. Let me have her number. I'm like, no, you not. You not that. Again, you're looking for two black girls and potentially three black girls to fight and you be at the root. It's giving racism. Okay, so y'all saw what Jesse had to say or heard what she had to say. Unless there's something going on behind the scenes, I'm not sure why Jesse Wu wanted to out Tamar in this manner, but I believe it. I 100% believe it because how she handled the Tommy Lee situation. So now we don't remember how she responded to Tommy. Let me jog your memory. Tommy, about a month ago, outed JR for trying to get with her and telling Tamar's business to Tommy. Tamar responded and said that it's fair game after a breakup. Don't get it effed up. He's a good man, Savannah. She also said that she was not going to lose her man to a crackhead, i.e. Tommy Lee. Well, why the hell did she say that? Because Tommy Lee came through with the text messages in between her and JR. She also advised Tamar not to take him seriously and that JR is nothing but a trick. Saying that you kicked her out and she went back to her mother's house. Not Mrs. Braxton. Not Mrs. Not Mrs. Mrs. Singer with the sold out tour that JR also told me was flex. It was a cap. What I said was, he had a nice suit. And from there, he was thirsty. He wanted to find me out. What's wrong with me going to a game? What is wrong with the situation is that that is your man, as you call it. That is your man. He knew it was a situation with me and you. And he was down. He was down to play off games. 
I wouldn't take nothing like that serious, my love. Like, we're black. Tamar, I can say your name. I know I'm not a crackhead. I look too well, baby, and I've never indulged in drugs. I don't have to keep saying that y'all gonna run with whatever. A hot damn mess. Now, if y'all hear me call Jeremy Robinson, Jeremy Lee, I do apologize. It's not on purpose. You get to know who Jeremy was, because I don't even know who he is. Simplified. He's divorced. He has five different children from four different women. Her and JR met on this show called Queen's Court. Yes, I could have started with this. He was in a Marines court in 1996. He was stationed in Iraq for some time. He's also a personal injury and criminal defense attorney. Founding partner of the JR Law Group. And he is the CEO of Rags to Riches Logistics. He released an album some years back and she titled it Bluebird of Happiness. Why is this important? These two bonded on the Queen's Court. And the reason why they bonded the most is because JR revealed to Tamar that he lost his mom due to cancer. And we all know that Tracy Braxton died in 2022. 2022 Tracy, unfortunately, lost her battle with cancer so did jr's mom so they bonded with the fact that these two have both lost somebody significant in their life they are also revealed to tamar that when his mother passed away at the funeral he saw a funeral he saw a hummingbird very significant and special to tamar because tracy braxton had five hummingbirds tattooed on her back and each bird represented her sister is quoted saying we all the sisters have a hummingbird locket and it's a locket because her ashes are actually in it tamar said we all have one and the reason being is because she wanted to go everywhere we went oh it got me to thinking wrong i definitely believe that our loved ones send messages to animals also I have always felt like if you have a visit from a special bird like a red bird um, what is it, a robin or a blue jay, then, you know, depending on how significant or, or how special it was for that loved one that passed away, sometimes they can visit you, in my opinion. And sometimes I see the birds, I see birds from my loved ones, I feel like when I need them the most, like I'll ask them to send a specific bird to let me know that they heard me when I was talking to them or crying out for them. I'll say what I think is happening, y'all. I want to say that everything said in this video is alleged and for entertainment purposes only. And it's from my own research and things that I've come up with and, and conclusions that I've drawn on my own. So please come up with your own conclusions. Come up with your own thoughts and opinions. These are only my thoughts and opinions, not to spread rumors. But it is seeming to me that JR is a fraud. I love, love. When I say love, I love me some. I adore and love me some Jennifer Lewis, y'all. And I read her book, The Mother of Black Hollywood, and it was really good. That book, she exposed a lot of things that she went through, being that she had an ex addiction, if you can follow my drift, as well as a bipolar disorder. We want to hone in on that ex addiction. That ex addiction led her to fall in love with a man that actually scammed her and also said that he had graduated from oxford university he said he was a navy seal he said that his mother passed away as well he had two children and was divorced this man was also an author of books okay she said that she did her due diligence and found the books on amazon however he showed up one day in a military uniform he played his role very well and she did find out that he was actually married with two children receiving three hundred thousand dollars from girlfriends turned investors the end of it all the fbi ended up researching this man and got wind of his scams he was eventually arrested and he pleaded guilty in 2020 to wire fraud the man was sentenced in 2021 and he is serving eight years in prison and he's ordered to pay two hundred and seventy two thousand dollars in restitution i stated in the beginning of this video everything that i say is alleged 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 this makes me want to go back and watch queen's court to see what was going on between jr and tamar because i love watching people's body languages and a lot of times it's not what they're saying it's what they're not saying I'm not sure if this man is full-on scamming tamar but it is coming off like he's going from woman to woman that he feels has a lot of money oh he's a lawyer he may be a great lawyer but that doesn't mean that a man can't scam you and use love to do it. Now, the TikTok video I made, I feel like Tamar got wind of that video, y'all, contingent on the way she responded. Now, if y'all don't know, TikTok is kind of like a big but small place. All that celebrities are joining, they're able to get access to what viewers are saying in real time. The video was trending. I think it's at 50,000 views right now. So I'm sure she saw it at some point. I could be wrong and delusional. And that's on me. Please don't think I said anything wrong other than to counsel her. She needs to get her mind right. I said that she needs to work on the, the inside of her instead of the outside of her because 
when you're so focused on the outside, you're going to ignore any warning sign. You're going to go with what feels good in that moment instead of looking at things in a long-term view, you know? And that's why I feel like Tamar find herself in these uncompromising, problematic, chaotic positions. Tamar has fallen out with pretty much everybody. Candy Burris, Honey Love, and all of the ladies on The Real. Fast forward to now. Her and Krishan had that debacle on social media. It was Tommy Lee. Now it's Jesse Wu. Personally, I did not feel like Tamar needed Krishan Rock's clout. Tamar has been out on social media for a very long time. She's had her own shows um, with her and her husband and with her sisters. I don't think she needs Krishan Rock's clout. I think that's ridiculous. I mean, look at what's going on now. You type in Tamar and she's going to trend, you know, whether she got into it with somebody or she's engaged. She can trend on her own. Still don't believe that. But in my opinion, when it comes to her relationships, it seems to me that she becomes male identified, submissive, and it's almost like she tried to block the outside noise, even warnings, when it comes to the men that she choose to date. The warnings, we know that JR's baby mama had something to say about Tamar. Let's not forget that ex-girlfriend who remained anonymous, who spoke out against Jeremy Robinson's schemes. Let's get into it. If you have not liked the video or subscribed by now, I think you should so that we can stay abreast on the current news, trending topics, shows like Love and Marriage, Huntsville, and Bell Collective. We are 12,000 strong and counting. Thank you so much for your support. After Tamar made this public post about Jeremy Robinson, and I want to say she proclaimed herself as being a bonus mom to his children. I have sat in silence for over a year respecting everyone's privacy while they disrespect mine. It says it was dated March 17th. I think Tamar's birthday is around that time. I might be wrong. Continue by saying, I've sat in silence while this person has come into my son's life and caused nothing but chaos and unnecessary drama. Continued by saying that Tamar was in no way a bonus or stepmom to her son, Asher. She said, my son does not mean anything to her and she has not thanked God for me and truthfully, none of his baby mamas. The best way to piece somebody off is by mentioning their children, posting about their children, posting pictures of their children, acting as if you care about them when you really don't. From experience, some men and women get in fresh relationships and forget all about their kids. I'm sure, well, I'm, you know, guessing that Jeremy probably made Tamar feel comfortable to make a post like that. You? She said, the reality TV star has said some demeaning, disrespectful, and outrageous things. Like, kind of how she told Jesse Wu that she will unalive homegirl if she keep messing with her N-word. I digress. She said, I'm fine with people sharing their version of the story that they've created for themselves on social media plus television. But what we will not continue to do is involve the son that I raised in someone else's shenanigans. Stated that around this time, Tamar was making no effort to meet her and has called calls JR to miss visitation weekends and birthdays. I don't get involved in none of my husband's affairs when it comes to his family or his children. I advise him behind closed doors, but I do not interject myself in between those relationships. It's just not my place, y'all. And I feel uncomfortable. Opinion, I don't know what that woman's experience is or was of my husband years ago. It's not my place. Especially when kids are involved. Y'all let me know below how y'all feel about that. Do y'all involve yourselves in relationships that came prior to you? Do you just kind of let them figure it out and just advise them to do the right thing behind closed doors. Miss Jenny Aniston stated, we have six children between the two of us and they mean everything to me. So miss me with the, he has four baby mamas. Thank God for them. We are blessed and drama free. And that's on Mary had a little damn lamb. Now me personally, I gave Tamar the benefit of the doubt around that time because we never know what Jeremy may be telling her about his baby's mom. For it is her responsibility if she wants to have a relationship with his children and you want to be in this man's life. In my opinion, if you want to bridge that relationship, it is on you, Tamar, to bridge that relationship. And if you can't or there's something going on behind closed doors, then don't speak about them publicly. That's just how I feel. People do not play about their baby. But moving on to this ex-girlfriend. There was a quote that came to my mind as I was reading her comments. Miss Aniston, the baby mama of Jeremy Robinson. Um, and it goes, be more concerned with your character than your reputation because your character is what you really are. While your reputation is merely what others think you are. In my opinion, Jeremy and Tamar was a train wreck to begin with. Tamar was still grieving her sister while Jeremy
mommy some issues with his baby mom is giving that he was kind of like romantically involved some type of way and there was a rough transition between the baby mom and tamar what y'all think but let's get into this anonymous tea that was spilled years ago about jeremy you know that he has five kids five or four children this anonymous person said years ago jeremy allegedly preys on black women sounds familiar the woman says that he has a fetish over black women so much that he often refers himself as light skinned tags himself y'all as light skinned wild chocolate and tags himself the minority within the minority she said attend the club almost nightly preying on beautiful black women and taking them home honestly i can see that look at the women that he's choosing to entertain tamar is a singer she's loud but you know she wants a persona in public as if she's classy and you know she's prim and proper he is a i don't give a type of attitude how you live what you see is what you get she don't care about a public persona as much as tamar does so i can see that this woman added that he can be extremely rude arrogant racially insensitive womanizing which we have seen and degrading you wonder why did tamar and him have that break in october hmm. she also said that he claims to be an ally of people and a protector of black women but his actions tells us otherwise as the co-parenting issues that she had at the time she said he's very dismissive of parental concerns he accused jeremy of manipulating her daughter by sending screenshots of their adult conversations in this family group chat i told y'all you go to messing with people kids that's when they're going to speak up they don't care what a person have to say i mean i'm the same way don't play with my kids for real she was done absolutely not she said that he's a colonizing predator that fulfill his fetishes of biracial babies to further feed his ego and desire of wanting to be accepted amongst the black community this post was back in 2022 around the same time it was another woman that alleged that she was jeremy's girlfriend and she threatened to expose him as well the jeremy proposed to tamar she stated on her instagram story my sugar daddy done proposed i'm about to make him pay for that embarrassment the Tamar, what are you doing? What are we doing, Six? I know that you are off black men, but this ain't it. I don't care who you date. If you wanted to date that tree trunk outside my house right now, do it. But at least make sure the tree trunk check out now. I'm sure he's not going to embarrass you like this. I mean, Vince didn't even do this. Also, y'all, I honestly believe somebody may have stepped to Jesse and let her know what's up with jeremy and that's why she came to that conclusion who she think jeremy is at his core and let's hear what tamar braxton had to say in response to what jesse Wu said in her now deleted youtube video unfollow you because you made a video that was circling around dish nation streets and it made its way to me where you were laughing at your friend what is this high school y'all and you turned the comments off so we can't even respond tamar come on now but i sure as hell hope she explained why she was laughing like what was the video about in front of the world somebody who helped you somebody who supported you somebody who gave you an opportunity that nobody has ever done out the out the goodness and the kindness of my heart because i believed in you you got on youtube and laughed in my face what does that have to do with you sending the threatening messages fam is there something we missing y'all as we seen jesse just come out the blue with this video and tamar's not saying what that thing was that pissed her off about jesse as far as her saying something on the video like what is it that she says otherwise it's coming off childish and dramatic i'm not understanding and i bet you it has something to do with that man is it about tommy was she laughing at you about tommy and I hate when people do something for me and they have to bring that up when we get into it. Like, we can't have a disagreement without you bringing up the fact that you gave me an opportunity. However, it does make sense why Jessie Wu was like, you know, I'm not Lonnie Love. And, and she was explaining her resume, how long she had been working in the industry. She uh, made mention that she had been at Dish Nation or she had been commentating for seven years or something like that, y'all. Don't quote me. But that makes sense because maybe it got back to her that Tamar kept bringing up the fact that she gave her an opportunity um, on Dish. I don't know. Y'all tell me what y'all think. And so that's why I unfollowed you. It wasn't about this story that you made up for the fans to make people think that you know, I'm a horrible person because you said yourself. I love Tamar. I work with Tamar. Tamar has been nothing but nice to me. Yeah. Um, 
person can be nice to you two months ago and then become a nasty person. So that doesn't really help your argument here, Tamar. Um, and you know, people can put on a face for a very long time. Let's continue, y'all. I've been nothing but nice to you. So which one is it? Is it that you feel threatened and I threatened you and your friend and I'm this horrible person. I make your work environment horrible and you will have peace and I don't bring peace to the table. Or is it that I'm a nice person? In this YouTube video that she's posting, it says December 12th, 2023. I think that's what it says. I believe the text messages was back in November. I'm thinking Tamar is going to come from the angle of putting 20 on a thousand, but if you threaten her, you threaten her. Like to me, Tamar is mad that she outed her. It seemed like you have more of a problem that she went public with the text messages or anything. And the simple fact that you have been making yourself look like a plump fool behind Jeremy. I would say that Jesse and Tamar is faking this for views, clicks and views, but I don't think so. And second of all, I don't put nothing past nobody just because I call them friend doesn't mean that they're gonna make they're not gonna make mistakes. Doesn't mean that we won't disagree. I like for my friends to hold me accountable. And I expect the same thing from my friend. I just had this conversation with, with a good friend of mine. November. So why are you doing this? What are you doing? Because I don't know where any of this came from. I watched the video in horror along with y'all. I... Now, I went to Tamar's page to try to pull up the full video, but I don't see it. Maybe she blocked me. I don't know. But I did notice one thing in that little snippet on her TikTok that was posted eight hours ago. What I've noticed is that Tamar never negated the fact that she did send those threatening messages and she did act a fool behind Jeremy. Even though this is coming out of the blue, this is why I say you have to watch your character versus your reputation. Because anytime something come out about you, people are going to go with what your reputation has shown us so far. Maybe Jesse Wu was in the middle of explaining something and it triggered her and made her think about those messages that Tamar sent her. That video is nowhere on Jesse's page. Maybe she felt bad afterwards, but it don't change the fact that you've been cutting up behind that man. Although you see Jesse Wu as a friend, doesn't negate the fact that you threatened your friend. Although Jesse went public without calling or consulting with you, how did you do it in the first place? Knowing that there was a possibility that it could be leaked. I wanna hear back from y'all. Tell me what y'all think in the comments. Y'all think Tamar is true? Y'all think Jesse Wu was wrong for blasting her friend?